Welcome to the 8th part to the Taylor Swift Folklore Cardigan tutorial. I know most of you were waiting on the sleeve portion but I got to be honest with you, I did finish knitting both the sleeves weeks ago but shortly after I was done, I realised that I messed it up pretty badly and then I procrastinated fixing it and decided to work on the button band first instead. So here's the tutorial for the button band. But don't worry because the sleeves will be coming up next. Before we get started on knitting, I would recommend you block your knits first to get the best shape possible. I am by no means a professional when it comes to blocking, so take my advice with a grain of salt. Before you get started, make sure that it's a hot or sunny day outside. I usually wet block mine, so the first thing you're going to do is fill a bucket with water. Make sure that the container you choose would be able to fit all your knits. We want it fully submerged in the water. You can also add some mild laundry detergent inside but I didn't have any so I left that part out. Only put your knitting in once you're done filling the container with water. Then you'll leave your knitting in the water for about 15 to 20 minutes. We want our knitting to be completely wet so push it in a little if it still floats. In the meantime, we will get our items for drying the knits ready. You will need blocking mats. You can use children's play mats that you can find at the grocery store for $10 for 4 huge blocks or you can also spend $40 at the craft store for 4 tiny blocks. Don't make the same mistake I did. Then you will also need some blocking pins. Again, the fancy ones were $50 and the stainless steel ones were only $2. Although for this case, if you're going to block your nets very often, I would splurge on the professional knit blockers because they're phenomenal compared to the pins. But if you're not going to splurge on blocking pins, then make sure you get those that will not rust when in contact with water. Also grab a measuring tape and a towel. Once the time is up, we will go visit our nets in the tub again. First, I removed as much water from the bucket as possible. Then I slowly got my knits out. It will be very heavy so hold it carefully to prevent it from stretching. And then I squeezed it to get the water out. I did it a few times to get it as dry as possible. Do not wring your knits though as that might ruin your fabric. Just squeeze it gently. Once you've gotten as much water out as possible, we will bring it out to dry with the towel. Lay the towel flat on a clean surface, I just did it on the floor outside my bathroom. And then lay your knit flat on the towel. Roll the towel so that you make a knitted towel burrito. If you're blocking a few pieces at a time, you can either put it all on the towel or do it one by one. Then put your weight on the burrito. You can push with your hands or step on it, whatever's the easiest. When you're done with this step, your knit should be fairly dry already. And then we're just going to pin it down on our blocking mats. Lay your knitting flat on the blocking mat and measure it out using your measuring tape to make sure that it fits the correct measurement. If you didn't measure gauge, this is the perfect time to stretch out your knitting out to match the given measurements. I'll leave the measurements on the screen for you. Now I'll let Video Nurin take over this tutorial. Okay, so we want 22 and a half inches, so we'll just block it here. And then we'll stretch, wait no, yeah 22 and a half, then we'll stretch it until 22 and a half. Okay, I'll move the measuring tape but you get what I mean. I'll put it here, then you can see what I'm doing. It's so hot. Okay, I have this type of blockers, I don't know what you call them, pins. They're pretty useful. So I've gotten it to be 22 and a half inches and then we'll just pin this bottom part down so it's straight and it looks good, you know? Yeah. Okay. So our bottom part is settled and now we're going to do the side. So the side is 24. Thank you. 
and then the rest of my so my top part and the sides all fit the measurement so i'm not going to put any pens on there because i'm also blocking the front panels and i won't have enough pins to pin them all down if i need to so this is what the back panel looks like and now I'm going to do the left front panel over there because there's space so I won't be using that thing even though this one is pretty useful because it has the boxes so one box is like an inch but yeah we'll do it over there So this is what the finished product looks like, my back panel and my right front panel. I have to redo my left panel and I haven't done that yet so this is what we're working with right now and that's basically how you block your knitting. I will see you again when this is dry. I did not end up filming me removing my knits from the mat because I was in a rush but if the whole day was sunny, your knit should be dry by the end of the day. Then just remove your pins and your knitting should be good to go. Here are all the measurements including the ones for the sleeves. Once your pieces are blocked, we can seam the shoulders together. Before we get started, I wanted to show you how my pieces turned out. I realized that I misread the pattern for the neckline shaping when making the left and right front panels. So here is the difference between the two. The one on the right is the one that was done using my method and the left is the one that was done following the pattern. You can see that the right has a slightly deeper v-neck as compared to the one on the left. However, one thing to note is that the left piece is not blocked, so that might be a factor that affected the final shape as well. To seam the shoulders, you need an embroidery needle and yarn. You can also use scrap yarn. For this, I'm just cutting a long tail from one of the loose ends. Don't worry about getting the length right because you can always add more halfway through if you need to. We are going to start on the left shoulder. First, thread through your yarn into the embroidery needle. Then we are going to attach the front and back panels together so that it's easier to sew them. I just use stitch markers but you can also use safety pins. Do this with the right side facing up. You should be able to match them up quite easily because the way we shape the shoulders while knitting creates a sort of staircase pattern. Now lay the pieces flat right side up. Insert your embroidery needle into the first stitch on the back panel which is the piece that is on the right from the back. Then insert it into the first stitch in the right front panel, also from the back. Pull the needle through until there's a short tail at the back of your work. Then we will insert the embroidery needle into the next stitch on the back panel from the front. I realise that the colour of the yarn makes it a little bit difficult to see, but a knit stitch will look like a V and a purl stitch would be a straight vertical line so you will be inserting your needle into either a V or a vertical line. For the best results, avoid the bind off edge and insert the needle into the stitch beside the bind off edge instead. Alternate between the front and the back panel. Repeat that for all the stitches until you reach the other end.
Once you reach the end, just insert your embroidery needle into the last two stitches as per how you did in the beginning. You can pull on the yarn to tighten the seams. Then weave in your tails and cut off the excess. Here is how the left shoulder looks like. Now we will repeat the whole process for our right shoulder. So first, attach your front and back panel together with stitch markers or safety pins. Then lay it flat, right side facing up. Insert your embroidery needle into the first stitch on the front panel from the back side of the work. Do the same thing for the back panel. This footage is easier to see so I've added in some graphics to help you out. The first stitch I'm inserting my needle into is a knit stitch, so it is shaped like a V. Then the stitch on my back panel is also a knit stitch, so there is another V. Again, another knit stitch. And we have another knit stitch. Guess what? Another net stitch. Now here we have a pearl stitch, so it's just a vertical line. I hope that makes it a little easier to understand. If halfway through you find that you might have sewed too much or too little stitches, you can always compensate by picking up more or less stitches for the next time you're on that panel. Then insert your needle into the last two stitches as you did for the first two stitches. Weave in your tails and cut off the excess yarn. And here's my obligatory try on before we get onto knitting our button bands. Before you start on the button bands, we are going to section out the panels. This is a really horrendous angle but it's the only way that you can see everything so please bear with me. For this, you'll need stitch markers or safety pins. First, we will put a stitch marker 12 inches or 30.5 centimeters from the bottom of our work. This is where we started our neckline shaping. If you have any lifelines or excess yarn, now is a great time to remove all of those. Put a stitch marker for both the left and right front panels. Then we will put the next stitch marker at the end of the front panel for both shoulders. Let me bring you in closer and we'll start picking up stitches. 
There was someone who asked me if it was possible to knit this cardigan on straight needles and it's definitely possible but once you come to this part I would recommend you knit the button band separately on your straight needles first and then sew them on after you're done. For everyone else using circulars, we'll just grab our needles and yarn. For this part, it would be good if you have a cake of yarn instead of just scraps because weaving in the ends would be very troublesome. Using our main colour yarn, we will pick up 50 stitches from the bottom of our right front panel to the first stitch marker. To pick up stitches, you will insert your needle into the first stitch from the right side of your work. Remember to insert it into a V so that it's a full stitch instead of a half stitch. Then loop your yarn like we're changing colours and put it through your needle. Pull the yarn through like you're doing a regular knit stitch. You don't need a very long tail, just leave enough for weaving in later. Insert your needle into the next stitch and knit the stitch using the yarn that is attached to the ball, not the one for the tail. You will repeat that until you have 50 stitches for the first portion of our button band. Try to pick it up as evenly as possible. I like to have a second marker to let me know the half point of the section so that I can pace my stitches better. If you have too many stitches on your needle, you can skip stitches. You don't need to pick up every stitch in order. For this project, you should have more than enough stitches to accommodate the whole of the button band. So once I reach the center point of the first section, I just count to make sure that I have about half of what was needed in that section. I would recommend you put stitch markers on your needle every 20 or so stitches, so you won't have to keep counting over and over again. Beware, we would be having over 250 stitches on our needle, so that's a lot of counting. For the next section, we will pick up 53, 57 or 61 stitches along the right neck to the shoulder. Now we are on the back neck and we will be picking up 45, 49 or 49 stitches evenly across. For this part, I put in another stitch marker to mark the center of the back neck. Next, we will be working from the top of our left front panel to the end of the neck shaping. Pick up 53, 57 or 61 stitches.
Finally, pick up 50 stitches along the left front edge to the lower left front corner. You should have 251, 263 or 271 stitches on your needle in total. For row 2, knit the first stitch. Then pull one, knit one to the end of the row. For rows 3 and 4, just knit the knit stitches and pull the purl stitches. This is the row where we will be working on our buttonhole. We are also on a right side row. With your contrast colour, work in the ribbing pattern as established over the first 8 stitches. Then we will make our buttonhole over the next 3 stitches. To make a buttonhole, first bring the yarn to the front between the needles like you are going to purl. Then slip the next stitch as if you're going to purl it but don't actually purl it. Take the yarn back to the back between needles. Slip the next stitch as if to purl and then bring the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch like a bind off. So now you have bound off one stitch. We will repeat that two more times. Slip the next stitch as if to purl. Then pass the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch to bind off. Now we'll do it one more time. Slip the next stitch as if to purl. Pass the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch. Now you have bound off 3 stitches. Slip the first stitch on your right needle back onto the left needle. Then we will turn our work so that we are on the wrong side. We are going to cast on 3 stitches using the cable cast on method to accommodate for the 3 stitches that we bound off. First, bring the yarn to the back of the work because we are going to knit our stitches. Then insert your needle in between the 2 stitches on your left needle and knit that hole. 
Now that you have a stitch on your right needle, slip it over to your left needle. Do the same thing two more times. So insert the needle in between the first two stitches and create a knit stitch. Then slip the stitch over from the right needle over to the left needle. We'll repeat it one more time. Insert the needle between the first two stitches and create a knit stitch. Slip the stitch over to the left needle. I was having some difficulty here but you're done with making the first buttonhole. Ignore me doing it one more time because I messed up. Turn your work back to the right side and continue working on the ribbing pattern over the next 17 stitches. Then we will work another buttonhole. To make a buttonhole, first bring the yarn to the front between the needles like you're going to purl. Then slip the next stitch as if you're going to purl it. Take the yarn back to the back between needles. Slip the next stitch as if to purl and then bring the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch like a bind off. So now you have bound off one stitch. Slip the next stitch as if to purl, then pass the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch to bind off. Now we'll do it one more time. Slip the next stitch as if to purl, pass the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch. Now you have bound off 3 stitches. Slip the first stitch on your right needle back onto the left needle. Then we will turn our work so that we are on the wrong side. First, bring the yarn to the back of the work, then insert your needle in between the two stitches on your left needle and knit that hole. Slip it over to your left needle. Do the same thing two more times. Insert the needle in between the first two stitches and create a knit stitch. Then slip the stitch over from the right needle over to the left needle. We'll repeat it one more time. Turn your work back to the right side and continue working on the ribbing pattern over the next 17 stitches. Now we'll work our last buttonhole. I hope this angle makes it easier for you to see. First bring your yarn from the back of your work to the front. Slip the stitch from your left needle to the right needle. Then move your yarn over to the back of your work. Slip the next stitch, then pass the first slip stitch over the second slip stitch to bind off. Repeat two more times. Now that three stitches have been bound off, Slip that last stitch on your right needle back onto the left needle. Turn your work over and we're going to cast on back the 3 stitches. Bring your yarn to the back of your work. Insert your needle into the space between the first 2 stitches. Then knit that hole and transfer the stitch from your right needle onto the left needle. Do that another 2 more times. Again, ignore me knitting that last stitch. Turn your work back and you're good to go. Work in ribbing pattern until the end of the row.
Work even in ribbing pattern for row 6 using the contrast colour yarn. Change to your main colour yarn and work in ribbing pattern for the next 4 rows. Bind off all the stitches on your needle. And we're done with our button band. Well, we still have to sew in our buttons, but that would be in the final part of the series, which is only two more videos away. Of course, I had to do another try-on. 
Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. Until the next one, which would be for our sleeves. Bye!